Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miami Brewster, and I want to welcome to welcome you all to today's How Students, Teachers, and Academic Researchers Can Leverage Census Bureau's New Business Permit Visualization Tool webinar. The Census Bureau produces a wealth of information on building permits for new residential construction down to the local jurisdiction level. What has been missing until now is a way to quickly and easily access and use the decades of data available. The Census Bureau's new visualization and extraction tool empowers users to engage this rich sub-county level source of information about the critical first step in construction, the building permit. This webinar will demonstrate how builders, suppliers, and developers can engage this tool to create visualizations that will assist their planning and growth strategies. This webinar will be recorded. The webinar recording and transcript will be available between five to 10 business days after this presentation. If we experience any technical delays, please utilize the chat feature to notify us of issues should any arise, and we will do our best to address them. Lastly, at the end of the presentation, we will open up the lines for question and answer session to allow everyone an opportunity to ask a question. We request that you ask one question and one follow-up question. I would like to introduce our speaker, Nathan Coy. Nathan is a lead analyst in the residential construction branch. I'll now turn it over to you, Nathan. Great. Thanks, Naomi. Yeah, as you mentioned, my name is Nathan Croy. I work here in the residential construction branch, and uh, I'll be talking a little bit about the building permit survey today, as well as our visualization tool that we've recently put out uh, to try and make our data a little easier to access. Um, I guess I should note we did a similar presentation last month, so if you were here for that one, this one's going to be pretty similar. Um, feel free to hang out, but uh, just in case you'd already been to that one, I um, wanted to just let you know. Um, first, Let's talk a little bit about the Building Permit Survey. Um, so the Building Permit Survey provides national, state, and local statistics on new privately owned residential construction. Um, so that goes down to, uh, so we have U.S., state, and then also MSAs, county, um, as well as city, uh, townships, things of that nature. So it's a nice thing about the survey. It gets uh, really granular. Um, data that we collect includes a number of buildings, number of housing units, and permit valuation by size of structure. And so every month we survey 9,000 building permit offices, um, and it's the same 9,000 every month. Uh, our sample uh, universe is read on every 10 years. So monthly we survey 9,000 places, and that's a stratified sample, so typically the largest um, and busiest building permit offices around the country. And then annually we reach out to an additional 11,000 permit issuing places, um, pretty much every other permit issuing place in the country that we don't collect data from annually. Um, so yearly it is a full census of all building permit um, issuing offices around the country. Um, our goal in the future is to have it be a monthly census so we can put out full data sets every month, um, but we're still working on some of the standards and process for that. Um, so for now it's still broken up into the monthly and annual subsets. Um, it provides a designated principal economic indicator, um, and it's the only source of current and consistent small area data on new authorizations for residential construction. So yeah, like I said, one of the really neat things about the survey is that it does go down um, to a really low level compared to some of the sales um, and other construction data that's just like the U.S. and regional levels, which is good but not quite as detailed. Um, so where we were before this tool, we had approximately 5,500 individual text files on our census website. Um, Maybe some of you are familiar with these, maybe not. I'll show those to you real quick. Um, this is our main building permit survey um, website at census.gov. But within there, we've got all our raw data files. Um, if you dive into some, for instance, county file, um, there's quite a few, hundreds and hundreds, um, basically two every month, plus annual files going back decades for all geographic types. Um, so yeah, just tons of data, and especially if you're trying to do time series and things of that nature, be really difficult to have to pick and choose from so many individual files um, to assemble everything. Um, the Federal Reserve, St. Louis Federal Reserve, has their FRED data tool that has some of our data pulled into it, which can also be a really nice resource, um, but it's usually broken up. You have to search for a very specific state or MSA to get that data from. Um, it's not all consolidated, so that can be a lot to juggle. Um, uh, HUD, they have a great tool uh, that we, we send them their data every month. We work a lot with HUD. And uh, they have another good tool. It doesn't have valuation in it, which is one big downside. Um, 
and is, well, it's not quite as ideal for trying to pull um, really large data sets, but it's also a useful one. And then Texas A&M as well, um, they use a lot of our data for some of their data products and data um, tools and files they put together. And as well, in the past, we've compiled custom files for our data users, um, which we're always happy to do, but we are a pretty small staff, just around three to five of us at any time working on the building permit survey. Um, so yeah, obviously, especially during busy times of the month when we're processing and closing out our data, it can be difficult um, to, to have to find the time to pull all that data for everyone. Um, so our goals with this project were to consolidate all those disparate files into one. Like I said, those 5,500 files. Um, and as well, you can imagine in the decades that we've been collecting data, um, standards for naming, conventions, uh, database organizing, and formats have changed quite a bit since the 80s. So as well, trying to just standardize all that um, to make it flow better for time series and things of that nature. Um, a tool that can cater to diverse user needs. So we wanted something that, you know, someone could, who was just curious about the construction going on in their local town or state, um, could just pull that up easily enough, as well as um, people who wanted larger data sets um, to do analysis or, or other things for that they could utilize the tool as well. And then frequent updates as new data is released. So the 17th workday, we release our revised building permits every month. So we want to make sure that um, every day of that release, the new data is getting into the tool. And so future functionality as well that we'll be adding to the tool on um, table download. So you can do custom, um, pull custom query and then download that table into Excel. Um, a compiled large file available. We're actually getting really close on releasing that. I know in the past we've gotten a lot of feedback, um, especially from universities and uh, other data users. They're just like one giant file of all the building permits data would be really useful instead of all disparate files. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got that together. It's about a 400 megabyte zip. I think it extracts to close to a four, uh, uh, four gigabyte, um, a four gigabyte CSV. So it's, it's massive, but I think for some analysis, uh, some people find it really useful. Um, we also add, want to add some more historical data. Uh, right now we go back about three decades, um, but we'd love to get some of our other data from the eighties in there. Um, we're still trying to standardize, um, some of those conventions so everything flows nicely within the tool, as well as adding MSA and CBSA data. Um, one of the hangups there is that CBSAs and MSAs, their boundaries um, are always changing with population flows and things of that nature. So we want to make sure that we find out the best way um, to have all that data in there, whether it means uh, rolling back the current names or just keeping it separate and letting people kind of figure it out the best they can. Um, that's one project we're also working on. Uh, the reason this data is useful, uh, permit issuance is one of the earliest indications of population flows and economic activity, um, as well as construction in general. Um, most of the country, especially the large, uh, extremely economically active areas, uh, require building permits. So, you know, it's sort of the first step in the whole process. Um, so when you start seeing a lot of permitting activity, it's kind of some of the earliest signs you can get um, of growth in an area. Uh, locate areas of growth in various housing types. Of course, we've heard a lot, lot about that, uh, especially over the last year or two. Um, single family homes versus multi multifamily and how that varies over time, as well as geographic area. Uh, trends in per permit issuance, uh, useful for determining where labor and material demands may be in the future. Um, because, yeah, so when building permits are pulled, typically, um, and you'll see in the next bullet there, but construction hasn't started yet. So you can kind of have an idea um, where uh, demand might be, labor is needed, things of that nature. That's been another uh, thing we've heard a lot about this year is how the, it just isn't the labor there necessarily for all the construction taking place in some areas, especially in the South. Um, that's another interesting insight the data can provide. And uh, yeah, just as a little tidbit of info, for 2020, 43% of construction was started the same month as permit issuance. And by three months out, 94% have started. So especially these days, um, people are really eager once they have that permit to get construction underway. Um, of course, there can be limitations, whether it's material or labor demands and things of that nature. But yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty quick process um, once that permit is issued. So that can also um, give an idea of our data. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you all the tool here. So this is what the tool looks like. Um, to access it, we have it uh, here at our main building permit survey webpage. We got a tab right here for data visualizations. 
and uh, that's where it's provided. And there's a link for that um, within the, the PowerPoint as well. Also, if you just search online for Census Building Permit Survey, um, then our site will come back up, uh, right up, as well as if you just go to census.gov um, and search for it, then it will be there for you. Here is our tool. And let me go ahead and show you some examples and uh, sort of a, a general flow of the tool. So let me hit on some of the things here. Basically, we've got the different measures. So we have total units, total valuation, single family units, single family valuation, multifamily units, and multifamily valuation um, for years. It depends. Um, some, uh, some geographic levels go back farther than others, but it defaults to 1990 to 2020, um, as well as for all states. Period, we have annual, monthly, and year-to-date data. And then for geographic types, we've got county, place, and state. And uh, then these are to filter down within the chosen geographic type. So by default, it's got all states selected here um, for total units for the last 30 years. And one of the neat things about the tool is we have the time series view. And then as well, we have a table view here, which shows similar data except it's got much more categories here, total buildings, total units, valuation, and all through um, all our different categories, um, both reported data as well as uh, data with imputation. So I know it's something everyone's really wanted in the past, and so it's kind of neat to have both options available. Um, but let me start with just maybe a few examples. Um, so first, let's look at some differences maybe between single and multifamily in a few states that have been quite busy lately. So let's look at Arizona. California, and Texas here. So in terms of total units, uh, we can see that Texas is, uh, is screaming along. In fact, it's the only state in terms of total uh, permit issuance that has surpassed its uh, early 2000 highs. Um, you can see Arizona's working on it and California as well, but it's pretty dramatically lower um, than it was back in 06, uh, 05. Um, and that housing boom is really in full swing. Um, and you can especially see differences, though, when you look at single family. Um, you'll see here as well, Texas has uh, uh, quite a lot of single family, especially compared to California and Arizona. But yeah, just, just how high Texas is um, compared to its previous highs, whereas California and Arizona are quite a bit farther down. However, when you come over here to multifamily, um, you'll see there's still quite a difference. Texas hitting all new highs, but you'll see California is much closer um, to its previous highs with multifamily. So just kind of lets you know, you know there's differences between states, certainly um, population centers within states. Uh, certainly Texas has lots of land and they're building lots of single family, um, multifamily as well, but certainly California is building up their multifamily uh, similar to levels that they were back at, uh, at previous times. Let me go ahead and reset this view back to the default. And then we can go ahead and look at some counties within a state. So the thing, so no counties or places are going to show here until you've chosen them under geographic type. But it should be noted that if you do choose anything under geographic type, it's going to load it for everything. So if I was to choose county now, it would try and load every county um, for all 50 states plus D.C. in the country. Um, so quite a lot. So better to choose um, filter down through state first. So in this case, we're going to go to my home state here, uh, Virginia. And then we're going to look at counties within Virginia and see what sort of activity may have been taking place. And so you can see here in Virginia, some of the busiest uh, counties, we've got Chesterfield County, Loudoun County, where I reside, and uh, Henrico County. And the other um, neat thing is, you know, there's so many counties over here, obviously a lot of them get kind of messy down there, but if you were um, curious about just one in particular, um, you, can, you can select it and highlight it. So if you want to know about Powhatan, for instance, um, that way you can kind of uh, kind of see it from everything else. Um, and that'll also work backwards if you're curious what uh, what state this is here. And that's, uh, that's going to be Arlington County right there. That's kind of how you can look at some of the county stuff. And then to dive down deeper, if you want to look at places within a county, well, let's go ahead and... Let's go to Arizona. Arizona's been in the news a lot, especially for all their growth and housing prices. I think the case Shiller just came out showing uh, showing really large year-over-year -year trends there in, uh, in Arizona. So we got Arizona here. Let's go county. So you can see counties, we see Maricopa County is uh, really leading the way for Arizona. 
but say we're not quite sure what cities may be in Maricopa. Probably guess being the largest and busiest in uh, Arizona, but let's see. So we choose the drop down, we can go to place, and there we see it, of course, Phoenix is, uh, is going right along Mesa, Arizona as well. It's a uh, pretty solid amount of construction lately. Um, so that can be a really useful useful way to see these things. And again, and this stuff is all in the table view as well. Um, so you can click over if you're more of a visual person and you want to look at that. Um, if you're trying to look at a ton of data, there's, of course, so much uh, stuff here that it can be a little a little tough to wade through, and that's why we're really excited to get the download functionality enabled. Um, it's taking us a little bit longer than we were hoping. Um, we just have to set up a new server to move it on um, to separate from some of the other census tools. Uh, that way we can download everything without worrying about the other indicator areas. But uh, yeah, so that table view is also really powerful and we're really excited uh, for people to have access to that. And then um, year to date can be really interesting. You know, it seems like it'd be a little odd um, in, a, uh, in a time series, but actually it's pretty cool. So let me go ahead and show the way I like using year to date data. So we can do 2021 and look at that. And then we can, uh, let's go to multifamily units. So if we weren't looking at year to date, if we were just looking at monthly, then uh, then it's a little chaotic. Um, you can kind of see the busiest uh, year to date places, but it's not necessarily obvious how this may all aggregate over um, the year so far. But if you go down here to year to date, Sorry, I see year-to-date places, I meant multifamily. But if you go here to year-to-date, then it's really easy to see um, sort of demarcation. You can see Texas, Florida, California, then New York and Washington um, having the most multifamily permits issued so far this year. And this data was all released um, last Friday. This is our, uh, our August data that we just released on the 17th workday. So I think it's a really cool thing you can do with year-to-date. That'll, of course, work on state, county, places, um, any other data. Uh, so that can be a really handy um, thing depending on the data you're after to kind of uh, clear up some of the some of the mess. Uh, we can look at we've got all our valuation data in here. So sometimes that follows similar trends as uh, as the absolute units, but of course there are construction cost differences between states. So let's have a look at how some large states may compare. Look at Texas and California again. So this is their total valuation. You um, can see Texas, is, of course, has a lot going on there. But if we look at, uh, let's get single family valuation, you see again, Texas, um, quite a bit higher there. And you look at multifamily valuation, and you can see that California spends uh, a lot more on, uh, a lot more on multifamily, because if you look at multifamily units, you know, see that Texas actually has more multifamily units being permitted to California. But then when you look at the multifamily valuation, you see that California um, actually has more, uh, more construction costs there um, for those units they're permitting. Um, and I wanted to show you real quick. So say we did have this data here or total units, or we wanted to look at the states, or uh, let's look at the counties within Texas and California. There's a lot, of course. And so, yeah, and this is where the download functionality really comes in because it's so much data, but if you wanted to download this for your own analysis and things of that nature, um, then this is where it's really nice to be able to download this cross tab. Again, we apologize that it's not quite available yet, but I wanted to at least show it, um, and our hope is that it'll be, um, be around fairly soon. So let me go ahead and open up this Excel here. Yeah, so it just downloads um, all the data being shown here. It'll go ahead and download for you. Um, which is really nice. Let me pull it over from my other monitor here. And you can see that's all the data we were just looking at. All the data we were just looking at for all those different counties. Um, and this is for evaluation, single multifamily, everything else. So this can be really useful. Um, just wanted to, uh, yeah, to show that to everyone as well. So. Yeah, that's just some of the stuff. There's, of course, tons of different ways to look at all this data, tons of different data um, to drill down into. Um, I just wanted to give everyone kind of an idea of all of that stuff. And uh, let me pull back up my PowerPoint here. And as well, again, resources. So we've got our building permit survey tool here as well. I'm thinking about it at the beginning, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> we got our survey tool there, as well as just our general um, census construction site. 
And uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions or anything, feel free. I know I went kind of quick through that. I apologize, it's only a 30 minute webinar. Um, my contact information though, feel free to send me an email anytime, any questions about the tool, um, the building permit survey in general, um, anything else, or give me a call. Um, always happy to help out, like talking about our data, seeing how people are using it. Um, anything else? I guess the other thing I did want to show real quick, um, I know some people have been really interested in kind of what that, uh, a giant file would look like that we've compiled into everything. This is just sort of a, a preview. It looks probably like what you'd expect it to look like. But yeah, basically it's got all the data and all the different formats. Um, yeah, it's a big file, but I know some people have wanted that for analysis and more powerful tools. Um, so yeah, I think that'll be up real shortly as well. But uh, yeah, thanks. And, uh, go ahead, Mayumi. Thank you, Nathan, for the informative presentation on the building permit data and the visual visualization tool. Um, used to access the data. And thank you everyone for your interest in our data and for attending today's webinar. Now before we begin our Q&A, please take note of the contact information listed here. Um, as a reminder, we're focusing our Q&A on today's topic. So if you have any questions on other topics, please feel free to send an email um, to us at census.axdata at census.gov. Um, and now we would like to open up the lines for the Q&A portion of this section. Um, let's check in with our operator. Operator, can you provide the instructions for listeners to ask questions? Yes. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your phone and record your name clearly. I do need your name in order to introduce your question. If you choose to withdraw your question, please press star 2. Again. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1. It will take a few moments for questions to come through. Please stand by. Yeah, in the meantime, Naomi, if you don't mind, I might grab a couple couple questions yeah. from chat, if that's okay. Yeah, I see Great. that. <laughs> we got a few in All here. Right. Yeah, so I went ahead. I stuck the link for the visualization there in the um, mm -hmm. chat. I know somebody asked for that. So that is there for you. Um, so I want to ask what the time lag is for multifamily from permit to start. You know, I'm not sure exactly. That's more in the uh, the survey of construction handles a lot of sort of the timing of things as it goes from uh, permit issuance to construction to sales and things of that nature. So yeah, definitely reach out to them. Um, if you search for survey of construction um, or you can navigate there um, from our website as well, building permits, if you go to new residential construction, um, their contact email is right here as well as phone number. And yeah, they're super helpful. But yeah, they'll definitely have a better answer to that as far as how multi um, differs from the uh, from the single family. Um, can you, uh, let's see. sorry, it's jumping around. <laughs> so is there a way to include year over year growth in order to compare other metrics like population growth? In our raw data set, we do have year over year growth and month over month growth. Um, and I think it should be easy enough just to tabulate in Excel if you do have the raw data. But yes, it is something we're trying to add in and had at one point. The only problem with doing year-over-year -year growth percent is that when you have places, when you have smaller places that go from like a very few amount of permits to like a ton, like for instance, Washington, D.C. might have like 10 multifamily one month or none, and then they might have a couple hundred, a thousand the next month. And so it kind of gets a little wonky with the scaling um, of things. So yeah, we would like to implement that, and it is in our raw data files. But yeah, it's a little trickier, uh, unfortunately, or it just doesn't, it doesn't scale well or look good um, in the view. Yeah, normalizing for population. Right, and we've talked a lot about that, and I think that's something we're going to try and do with a map tool um, that we've begun working on is, uh, yeah, have permits per population, because, of course, especially our geography area, they do really like um, having the permits per population, because you're right that if it's an area without many people, they might have a lot of permits for the number of people there, but, you know, compared to Texas, California, you know, all that uh, can tend to get masked. So, yeah, and within our raw data file, we do have population data, but that's just done every 10 years with the decennial census. Um, so it's not necessarily capturing a lot of the population flows that are happening between, between those 10 year periods. Um, and of course, that's when a lot can change as well. Um, 
I apologize if I'm skipping over some of these. Feel free to shoot me an email for some of these. They're just like a little more specific or time involved to answer. And I'd love to like talk you through them um, or, uh, or try to help out many of the problem things. Um, so as far as geocodes for counties, those do change as well. And those haven't been, um, we haven't done anything with those. So I know Miami-Dade is one of the larger ones that had a county code change and the, uh, can't remember last five or ten years. Um, so no, we haven't normalized those back through the data set, um, only because you know, and that's kind of always a balance we're trying to reach. Is like, how do you do you go back and edit stuff in the past to make it consistent with time series going forward, even if it wasn't, you know, it was different boundaries in the past. You know, is it really consistent over time? So that's something we run into a lot with CBSAs and MSAs as well. Um, Downloads include, so we don't have latitudes and longitudes for geography. It gets a little tricky, especially with our place level data, um, just because we're reaching out to building permit offices. Um, but the data we have for the building permit office where we're reaching out to is typically based on a mailing address and not necessarily um, what the data is covering. So they're reporting for one area, but we may have different data as far as how we contact them. So we don't really have anything with latitude and longitude, but since this does, the geography area does have a lot of tiger shape files and things of that nature that aren't too bad to match up because we do have full FIPS codes um, where available for all the different geography types within there. Let's see if I got there. Yeah, someone asked about the bulk down data download. I'm hoping very soon. Um, I'm always so scared to say any any dates, but <laughs> fingers crossed within the next couple of weeks. We've got the, the file all good, and we've got our FTP site. Um, I think we have the space on the server, so we just need to get it uploaded there um, and type up some documentation. So I'm really hoping in the next few weeks we can get that bulk, um, bulk file up there. Uh, someone had asked, I think, sorry, I don't see the exact question now, but they'd ask about um, commercial versus residential and things of that nature. Yeah, that's sort of the limitation of our survey. It's a voluntary survey of 9,000 building permit offices every month. So there's always that balance of, let me pull this PDF back up here as well. Someone's asking for contact information. I apologize. Um, yeah, so it's always that balance of like getting voluntary response and having a really low response burden with getting a lot of the data. Um, there are times in the past when the building permit survey has covered um, demolitions, uh, I think additions, alterations, conversions, even I think religious structures and things of that nature. But I think they very quickly realized that when they started asking for data that was that granular, they would either get non-response or the response they would get wouldn't be very accurate. It would be in, or would be incomplete. So yeah, it's like a very brief. Um, and I can show you our what our form looks like real quick here. Um, so you kind of have an idea. Like 95% of our response these days is online. But the survey form sort of certainly shows what we're after. And basically this right here, this box number three, that's all the data we're capturing every month. So single family, two unit buildings, three and four unit buildings, five or more unit buildings, total buildings, total units, and total valuation. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And again, it is that real balance. You know, the nice thing about our data is it goes down to a super granular level, you know, 9,000 places every month. Um, it, other side of that is something like the value put in place survey, um, the VIP. They've got data broken down by, you know, educational, private, public, um, commercial, residential, all sorts of different things, but it's only at the U.S. and regional level. So that's sort of the trade-off. It'd be awesome to be able to have super granular level at a, uh, at a really low level, super granular details. But uh, yeah, it's not quite happened yet. Um, we do have a lot of projects going on uh, using satellite imagery, using third-party data. Um, so our hope is that we can add some more of this stuff in the future. But uh, I'd be hesitant to give any firm day on that. But it's certainly something we'd love to do at some point. And so yeah, someone else else had asked about non-residential building permits, and yeah, that's where it uh, that's where it gets tricky to get that data. Uh, someone asked for a copy of this presentation. Yeah, I think they usually send out a, um, a transcript and recording of it uh, shortly after. I forget what the operator said, um, within a week or two, I think. See any other questions by Amy that I may not have hit? And I apologize if I did miss your question. But again, just reach out to me, and I am more than happy um, to always help out. 
It looks like I would I received a question privately. Is there another webinar on this topic later? I do remember you saying that. Or will it be the same? Seminar? It'll be similar, yeah. Thursday we have one, but sort of just a catch up um for anyone who didn't catch the one last month or this one one. So if you're here, no need to uh no need to show up Thursday. Um and I'm sure you want to see if there's any in queue on the phone. Operator, at this time, do we have any questions in queue? I should no questions at this time. Okay. Um, and someone asked about 2021 data and how they only have 2019. Reach out to me, and I'll make sure wherever you're looking, you have the most recent data um, or get you the most recent data if uh, if you're not able to have have it because yeah, all our files are updated every month. Um, certainly 2020 data was released back in May for all our annual data. So it should all be there for you and happy to direct you direct you to it if you can't find it. Um, I'm not sure if this question will be a long explanation, but someone is asking, can you explain what the valuation means again? And is it cost or value of sold property? Yeah, no, that's a gr great question. So the valuation we capture is typically what's included by the builder when they're pulling the permit. So typically it's the cost of construction, so it'll include materials and labor, but it's not an appraisal value, it's not an estimated sales value, and it doesn't include the lot value. So really it's the cost of building um, on that site um, materials and labor. And I think we have an FAQ that hits on some of this stuff. Um, but there's also um, a ton of different data there, and it can be hard to navigate to it. So yeah, anything like, if you have any other questions similar to that, um, feel free. And as well as some of our documentation, um, we have have some of that information as well. But yeah, that was a really good question about the valuation, and it is just the cost of construction. Um, so even though construction costs are typically higher in area, high cost areas, but yeah, it's not necessarily gonna reflect quite as much as the sales price. Um, and extremely expensive areas, yeah. So by placing the tables at cities, yeah, so place is basically our lowest level, and it's basically going to be um, cities, towns, townships, county unincorporated areas, um, villages, um, basically what you think of as kind of being the smallest geographic area, just short of sort of blocks and neighborhoods and, and things of that nature, yes. Uh, let's see, and mapping data, yeah, that's a, that's our next big project, is get the mapping data out there. Um, like I said, it's kind of the next thing we're going to tackle. Um, so don't have an exact date, but at the moment, no, we don't have kind of our own mapping tool um, or geographic uh, things of that nature, other than all the included FIPS and codes, things like that, um, which is really nice in Tableau. It's pretty easy, especially on, like, five-digit county and things of that nature. Um, they... Uh, they go in really well. Where it gets a little trickier is like the place level, um, only because you have so many duplicate names and things like that. Um, that can be tough, but just sort of the layout of our survey, it doesn't have those nice census tracks um, the way some of the population surveys do. Uh, and one last one here, how is our multifamily broken down? And yeah, I think I kind of, I think I answered that without seeing your question. Um, here, so yeah, it's single family, and that is detached and attached, so that includes townhouses. Um, ideally, it's hard getting that, <laughs> getting respondents on board with that sometimes, um, especially if they issue permits, like they might issue a, a row of four townhouses as um, one building for four units, but we try to get townhouses um, in our single family category. Then two unit buildings, and so typically two units, um, we wouldn't necessarily want a duplex there since those are side by side. So two units and three and four units, we're really looking for stacked units there, um, with especially for two units is like a fairly rare category um, to have one on top of the other two unit construction. And then five or more units, that includes everything. So huge high rises in downtown Miami, um, all the way to maybe like an eightplex or something um, would be in there. So yeah, hopefully that, hopefully that answers your questions. And if I didn't get your questions, again, feel free to reach out. Um, my name is Nathan Croy. My email is just nathan.croy at census.gov. Um, that's my direct line as well. And uh, 
here's our branch email, EID, Economic Indicators Division, dot residential construction branch, dot building permit survey at census.gov, but probably easier to just uh, just remember mine, Nathan.Croy. And yeah, happy to help you with any other questions, and thanks for joining us today. Yes, at this moment, I'd like to express our thanks to everyone for attending today's webinar. This concludes today's presentation. Please stay tuned for the presentations and slides to be posted to our site. Um, and also, Devin is posting um, a link to provide your feedback for today's webinar. And have a great day. Thanks, everyone.